Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's the owner with Thrifty Divas. I just got home um, because I had to do a big uh, kind of grocery and essentials run for my parents and then go drop it off to their house. Um, and while I was there, um, I found a dented can of asparagus, which I grabbed because it was the only thing there. And at a second store that's literally half a mile down the road I found one of these so I got two things of asparagus and why am I telling you this because it was just an idea of what to throw into the quiche I'm about to make so I want to dedicate this video to the other thrifty diva my aunt Michelle because we were texting last night and she said still after all these years her text was I have yet to make a quiche still for some reason, quiches have always intimidated her, or I don't know exactly what the deal is, but it is unexcusable. So I told her, fear not, I am posting a quiche video and you will be fine. So I dedicate this quiche video to her and I'm about to go inside right now and make it for her and anyone else who's intimidated by quiche because there's nothing to be intimidated about. So I hope you guys enjoy, let's go cook. All right, guys, so basically there's just a lot of cutting and mixing of things that goes into making a quiche. Um, actually, if your Dollar Tree has a refrigerator section, everything can be made with Dollar Tree stuff. I'm just adding in some other cheese that I had in the fridge, but everything else is actually from Dollar Tree. So the first thing that we need to do is add 10 to 12 eggs. I'm just going to go ahead and use all 12. Um, and this is a dozen from Dollar Tree, so let me just go ahead and break all 12 of these eggs in the bowl. And once they're in the bowl, we're just going to start cutting everything up. I have this um, deli-style smoked ham cold cut from Dollar Tree. The great thing about quiche is that you can put anything you want in there. Caramelized onions, mushrooms, a whole bunch of cheeses, bacon, all vegetables, or broccoli and peas. And I mean, it's spinach, endless, endless, endless. That is what's so fun about it. So once I get both of these packages of ham open, I am just going to cut them into like square shapes. So I'll go ahead and cut the short way this way and then I'm going to go ahead and cut the long way as well just making little squares all right so now let me just go ahead and beat up these eggs All right, now I'm going to go ahead and add some milk, and this is actually the boxed shelf-stable milk from Dollar Tree as well. I've never actually measured the milk I put in here. I always eyeball it, but for teaching purposes, if any of you need to know, I'm going to attempt to measure it for the first time ever. So let's start off with one cup. And it's going to need more than that. So I'm going to go a little less than a cup, maybe three quarters. Yep. And that looks just about perfect to me. So then we blend that together. And I'm going to go ahead and add in this ham so that I can clear off my cutting board for other cutting. And it's all stuck on to the cutting board. <laughs> this is so annoying. Oh my goodness gracious.
All right, so as soon as I get all of this off, we can go ahead and cut up some other stuff. That is some stubborn ham, my goodness. I'll just stir this around a little bit. Okay. Set this aside. And now I have this can of asparagus, which I have already drained. That's what that looks like if you've never seen it. This is my first time. Um, all right, so this is the Pampa canned asparagus. I'm gonna drain out the liquid from that. I'm also actually gently squeezing the whole bunch to get out even more excess. So that's what that looks like. Not so pretty, but I'm just gonna go ahead and slice these up. Add them to our egg mixture. One probably would have been enough, but whatever. I already opened and drained this, so go hard or go home. So again, draining the liquid and gently squeezing the whole bunch to get a little more fluid out. So this is how the jar compares to the can. It's a little better, a little bit. And then we add this to our mixture as well. And let's just mix this all around a little bit. Try to break up those bunches. And this always happens with quiche. So you have to always kind of open your whisk <laughs> to get all the stuff out. All right, next I have this bag of the Frigo Real Cheddar um, from Dollar Tree, the cheese that actually melts. So I'm just going to throw in this whole bag. And I'm also going to add in a little bit of extra shredded cheeses that I had in the fridge from Aldi. So I'm just going to add a little more. It is the Mexican style. It doesn't like necessarily taste Mexican, just tastes like cheese. So it's perfect. So I put a whole bunch more in there, stir this up, empty your whisk and now we're just going to season it so a tiny little bit of salt some black pepper this is some of that weird adobo that has oregano in it some garlic powder. And now the secret quiche ingredient, just a pinch of ground nutmeg. Actually, let me stir this up to give you kind of a blanker canvas so you can see how much nutmeg I'm putting in. Putting in a touch of nutmeg just gives it a very classic quiche flavor. So it may sound crazy to some of you, just like that. Perfect. And now this is all ready, empty your whisk, <laughs> and this is all ready to pour into our crusts. So I always use deep dish frozen pie crusts. This one I've had for a while. It's all broken because it's been in my freezer for too long and I've put other things on top of it and broken it, but It'll have to do, because it's all I have. So these always come in two packs, and this recipe that I'm making is good enough for two. So um, these are in really, really bad shape, but I'll work with it. So I guess I'll take these bits out for now. I don't know, I'll place them on top later. We'll see what happens. And you want to put these on a sheet pan before you fill them because they will leak a little bit when they're cooking. So that's the mixture right there. And you're just going to kind of try to evenly distribute it between the two deep dish pie crusts. You can go with 10 eggs. That would be totally fine. You can use lactose-free milk as well. 
I don't recommend using almond milk or anything like that because it might interfere with the uh, setting of the quiche. All right, so now I'm just gonna scrape out the residual ham, again, this stubborn ham, and split it up between the two pie crusts. I'll just set these around. Maybe I'll luck out and they'll still stay on top. I don't know. And the other thing I like to do, which is completely not necessary, but I do it because it's the way my mom always does it, just sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top too. I've preheated my oven at the very beginning of this to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And now we are going to put them in. All right, so this is at about 47 minutes. And the way to check them is to wiggle your pan, and if there's a lot of wobbliness in the middle, they're still not done. See that? So they do need a little longer. Just a little bit. And now, of course, I went too long. This is at about an hour and 15 minutes. It probably should have been somewhere between probably an hour and five minutes oh well all right so now we are um looking at them slightly cooled and they do fall a little bit and here is a sliced piece looking delicious and pair it with salads quiche and salad go together like peanut butter and jelly and there's the baby's plate so i hope you all enjoyed and i hope if anybody was intimidated to make quiche before this video you just run ahead and go make the quiche anytime you have the eggs because i know it's a difficult time right now thank you for watching and until the next video stay blessed my friends